Well, welcome back. It's day three of us going down to the VPL. Uh, the bad news is uh, we did not find the first ten of the National Universal Anthology, the limited edition. We didn't find the first ten. Uh, we'll swing by tomorrow. Fingers crossed for us if we can find the first ten. It'll be the com first complete set I've ever managed to save. I've got little bits and pieces of other sets, so fingers crossed we can get that tomorrow. If not, it's going to be pretty hard to track down the first ten of a limited edition set numbered 608. But just to show you what we did today, okay, we've got a couple of comic books because that just happens. Uh, these are just an example of kind of books that, you know, will get destroyed, not just the antiques. Comic books get destroyed. West Coast Trail. I picked this up for a friend of mine who's a mechanic. He's about to retire. It's a perfect kind of book for him. You can get graphic novels, art books, and here's a whole bunch of history, uh, well, antique books I've saved. <clears throat> and I just want to show you one thing, for example. Yes, these are kids' books. Okay, Jack and Jill. Nice plate. Wow. But what people don't realize is uh, this is from 1880. Kids' books from 1880. Saved them. Um, you know, like I said, you know, these may cost two fifty a piece, but they're hard covers. Yeah, you know, these are actually hard cover. You know, Mother's Encyclopedia, not complete either, but you save it because there's some stuff in there you're not going to find anywhere else. I uh, got some other kid books and so forth. But I just want to show you the thing that I'm telling people to do is if you don't want the books yourself, you don't want to save them. Well, buy them and find a school that needs them. See this pile here. These are all books that I managed to buy that I'm going to give to my daughter's high school. It's a French high school in Vancouver. They don't have too many books. The funny thing is, this high school, not counting textbooks, has about only about 100 other books. Well, they got about 125 now once we give them those. So go out, save some books. I mean, it doesn't hurt. It actually looks nice, folks. These are books I've saved over the past five years. So, you know, yeah, uh, I don't think I'll be buying any more books tomorrow because, frankly... Uh, we're tapped out. I'm going to be on a really strict diet for the next couple of weeks, maybe a month. Tea biscuits rule. Uh, so, like I said, go down, save some books, uh, and let's let's work on trying to get these people to realize that, you know, saving money by destroying the books is a very short-sighted, blinders-on way of thinking. You're better off maybe having to, you know, spend a bit of money and find schools that want the books then get your rhythm. Because in the end, the long term of it is, you give these school books, those books stay alive, the schools get better books, they get a more range of books. You know, tax right off for the library. Give them away instead of destroying them. Same goes for your recycling companies. You know, we we got to pressure these recycling companies not to just take, oh, there's no UPC on the book, let's throw it in the paper recycling. And I know you're saying, well, they make money off the paper they recycle. Well, I guarantee you, if these people had little thrift stores where they would sell the books, they'd probably make more money off that because people like me would probably go down every week and just to pick up one or two books. So this has been Mad Montreal Man, Mad Montreal Man family. We're all kind of going to be on a diet for the next two weeks, but it's worth it because guess what? We saved some books, and that's what really counts. Because computers, when they die, eh, when a book is lost, well, it's something tangible. We'll give you one more follow-up tomorrow. Wish us luck getting you other books. And go buy a book already. Quit watching me. Go buy a book.